welcome to my long, long overdue update on my own personal car, my Porsche Carrera 4S. It's a 2017 model, it's now done 21,000 miles, and it's coming up on two years old, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, February, this February, I'll have owned this for two years, and it's been a wonderful car. It gets a lot of abuse. Those of you that follow my channel know that I use this car for everything. It's a dog hauler. It's a snow plow, it's a utility truck, it's a furniture removal van, it's an occasional track car, and a regular loser of drag races. Yeah, this car gets a lot of use and a lot of love. I absolutely adore this car. It's been my favorite vehicle I've ever owned, bar none. It really is a joy. Um, it just does everything so well. And that's what's great about Porsche 911s, is that they really are a rock solid, comfortable sports car that is so useful for so many things. Because of those back seats, I've often had kids and I always have dogs in there occasionally, to kids, even sometimes adults get put in the back there. Um, but it's always such a pleasure to drive this car. You know, I get to drive a lot of uh, fantastic exotic cars on this channel, but I'm always relieved to get back into my little C4S. It's such an all-rounder. And on top of that, I've driven every single uh, modern Porsche 911 as well, and they're all great cars. Uh, my personal favourite amongst the range, for driving at least, is the uh, GT3 Touring with the manual gearbox. The, the engine in that car is glorious, but I probably would never want to own one myself. It's a step away from um, usability for me that I don't like without the back seats and it being a bit more of a harsher ride. I still, I think if I was reordering a 911 today, I would probably still order the Carrera 4S. It is my favourite model in the range. Uh, obviously I'm a bit biased because it's my car, but honestly, for my use, this is the car for me. I do have a couple of little niggly problems with this car, which I'll get onto later in this video, but overall it has been a trouble-free experience. And it's been a pretty low cost experience as well. I generally don't uh, spend a lot of money keeping this car running apart from gas. It's had two services, one at 10,000, one at 20,000. The 10,000 one was only $350. The uh, 20,000 service was 700 and something dollars, $750 I think. So servicing your Porsche 911, how much it costs completely depends on the dealership you take it to. For those poor souls that live in uh, Manhattan, for example, and have to go to Manhattan Motors, sometimes a, a, a 10,000 service there can be 1,500, even up to $2,000, whereas a service outside of Manhattan, or so, like a service at my local dealership, can anywhere, be anywhere between $300 to $700. Uh, insurance is also pretty low for this car, strangely. Porsche 911s, insurance companies really don't charge a lot for insuring these cars. Uh, my car costs $780 a year to insure, which is actually $200 less than my 2013 Golf S, which is worth maybe $5,000. But the real joy of this car, of course, is just driving it. You know, I got the manual transmission to be a little bit more engaged with the driving of this car, and I'm glad I did that. But the things that I love the most about this car, the first one has to be the engine. They've got the sound of that three litre turbocharged engine in this car, perfect. I never get tired of chopping through the gears and listening to that engine. Uh, but overall, it's such a well-balanced car. It's such a beautiful car to drive because unlike so many sports cars, it's got great visibility. It's such an easy vehicle to drive. You know, I get a lot of other people driving this car using it as a camera car for when I'm filming their cars. And generally, people have no trouble so long as they are au fait with manual transmissions. And it has such a lovely transmission. It's light. It's predictable. It's such an easy car to drive at speed. And today, because I'm doing this update video, I also have my friend Kevin's car here. He brought, he brought his Carrera 4S, same model as mine, at approximately the same time as I did, but he configured his completely differently. So I thought it'd be worthwhile having a quick look at his as well. So I'll pop over and drive his car now.
Okay, so I'm over here in Kevin's car. I kind of consider Kevin's car my car's evil twin because it's got everything that my car doesn't have. He configured his completely differently, uh, which is great. I love driving this car. It is such a great experience and amazing because despite being the same make, model and year as my car, it is an entirely different car just because of options. And a big part of that is the PDK, of course. It is an incredible transmission. Boy, it makes these cars come alive. I totally understand why so many people get the PDK. More than 95% of 911s have the PDK transmission. Um, sure, I love the manual in mine, but I totally get why people get the PDK. It reads your mind. If I slip it over to manual mode, look how quickly it changes the gears. It is incredible. Yeah, if we t take a quick look at the differences between mine and Kevin's car, he has the LED lights, whereas I have the Xeon lights. He has the sports exhaust, I have the standard exhaust. Uh, he has different wheels than mine. On the inside, he's got the standard black interior, whereas I've got the two-tone interior, which totally changes the look of the interior of the car. He has the carbon fiber, whereas I have uh, leather. Uh, as I said, he's got the 14-way seats. I've got the 18-way seats. I've got the Sportex fabric, which is really holding up great. In fact, I think it wears better than the leather does. We've got a bunch of cosmetic changes between our cars. I have the leather steering column, whereas he does not. He has the uh, sports steering wheel, whereas I do not. I've got a bunch of leather options and the door sills are longer on mine. Um, but both have the glass sunroof. We both have the rear axle steering. Interesting thing about the mirrors on this on these cars is he has the sport design mirrors and he has a different mirror on the inside as well. For some reason Porsche put the 991.1 mirror in his car whereas my car has got the 991.2 which is a, a slimmer mirror. And of course we both have the sport chrono pack which does different things in, in these two cars. With the, with the uh, PDK transmission it uh, manages the launch control if you use that and with the manual transmission in my car it, man it manages the rev matching if you want to turn that on. But it's really the seats that make the big difference to how this car feels. The 14-way seats are noticeably firmer and not nearly as comfortable. I had 14 ways on my previous 911. I'm glad I didn't get them again. Um, Kevin's car's done 40,000 miles now. He's done twice the number of miles that I've done. So I was kind of expecting his seats to start to soften up, but instead I think they've actually got harder. Certainly if I sit in his passenger seat, I notice it's a little softer than his driver's seat. So if I was to change anything in Kevin's car, I'd certainly change it out for the 18 ways. These 14 ways are firm. And so back into my car, and yes, yeah, switching between the two cars, I immediately notice how much more comfortable my Carrera 4S is, uh, mostly due to the seats. The seats are far more supportive, uh, have be better padding, and just, I don't know, they, they, they're just far more suitable to my body shape. So what problems have we had with these cars? Well, Kevin's car has had a minor problem with a sensor, so his car kept on telling him it was overheating. It went in for a service and that got fixed. Mine's had some small niggly problems, you know, the type of problems that come and go, so it's always hard to, to tackle them because they're not always there. The first fault is this little fault here. It comes up saying that uh, there's a fault with the rear light, but there never is a fault with the rear light, and it just goes away after a couple of minutes. Uh, the second one is this message here, which looks a little more alarming, but once again, I suspect it's just a sensor like in Kevin's car, and it's going in on Monday. Hopefully they'll fix that. But the biggest problem in this car is, the, is actually my driver's seat, uh, which seems like it's possessed by the demons of my old 911. Uh, the first thing it does is this. Yes, it squeaks and creaks like old people having sex. The second problem is the seat heating. Sometimes when I go to turn that on, my seat looks at me and goes, ah, I'm gonna roast this fat turkey. Uh, normally heat seating runs at, if you're talking in old fashioned temperatures, 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But my seat uh, just goes nuts and runs right up to 200 or even 250 Fahrenheit. But yeah, the seat uh, must be a thermostat or a resistor that's gone. So I just suspect the Porsche needs to replace the seat and then we'll be all good. So what are my thoughts on replacing this old bucket of bolts with the new 992 911? Well, I certainly am very excited for that car. It looks excellent. I really like what they've done with the styling. There's really not a lot of difference performance and probably driver-wise to this car. So I'm not in any real hurry. I'd like to get get wait at least until the initial 
craziness dies down and you can actually get discounts and they probably would have brought in a few more of the options. I'm hoping that by the time I order mine they would have brought in the, the head up display and a few of the other options which are missing from the, the 992 on release. So yeah, I'm in a hurry, maybe a year away at least and people should be aware, you know, here in the US at least, we're not going to see the 992 for at least another eight months. So, you know, everyone that's rushing in and putting deposits on these things is just kind of wasting their time um, because, you know, the allocation is going to be very small at first and then it will build throughout 2019 until they start catching up with the back orders. So, yeah, I'm very happy with this car. I'll hold on to it probably for another year before I look to change it out. It is a wonderful little beast. If I was replacing it today, I'd probably get exactly the same car with more or less exactly the same options. I'm very, very happy with this car. It has been and continues to be a thoroughly entertaining and enjoyable car to own and drive. I do tend to drive like a bit of a dickhead when I'm in this car, uh, which indicates that I am enjoying it a great deal.